Hi everyone, I'm Vicki from Creative Notions. I came to you today so that we could do a tutorial on this quilt behind me, which is now named Wildflower Farm. There's a lot of wildflowers in this uh, quilt, a lot of poppies and snapdragons, some really pretty sunflowers and things like that. Also, there's farm animals. There's cows and pigs and chickens and things like that. And we live on a farm, so I love all of those things, wildflowers and farm animals. We have ducks, geese, chickens. We've had pigs and cows. We have cats. Um, we live in between two or three different farms, so the cats are good and happy. They get to chase mice all day. And we've got a whole brand new batch of kittens and one just getting ready to be born, or one batch just getting ready to be born. So I'm sure I'll show those to you soon. Anyway, this quilt was made while I was making the video for it. And there uh, are, it you can make 42 blocks out of the focus fabric, which is the part right in the middle right there. Um, this quilt is does not use 42 blocks. It is five across by seven down, so it uses 35 blocks. So if you only wanna make this size quilt, you'll make 35 blocks. It does have the possibility to make it bigger by using the 42 blocks, but you will need one or two extra fat quarters. I do have some finishing kits available on the website and I'll put the information down below. And if you need an extra fat quarter or two, just let me know, send me a text or something. Well, look who came. Harley got out of school and wandered over to grandma's house and she found a kitten. We have lots of those. Um, there's four in this litter. They don't come in batches, they come in litters. Yeah, we have another litter due. <laughs> don't they, Harley? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I kinda wanna show you what's coming to you and I'm sure you've already received your, your May package. So um, I'll share with you. I got these neat little bags and I think that we're gonna keep using these because not this one in particular, but something similar. And this is kind of to remind you of a tea bag. This one says, come let's have some tea and talk about happy times. So I liked that. Um, my niece and nephew made this cute little teacup right here. We were gonna stick a little a little tea bag right behind it in a in a little pouch, but pouches didn't quite work out. So we ended up with a little cute thing for you to put in your planner or whatever you wanna do that's just a cute little teacup with, with a little sewing machine on it and some pins, really fun. So here's your tea and it's an herbal tea and there's a lot of different flavors. And then there's a rotary blade for 45 millimeter um, rotary cutter. Who can't use an extra one of those? I know I do all the time and I don't, and it's usually in the middle of the night when I have to run. Well, there's no stores open, so I can't get one. I have yet to have anybody call me and say, I need a rotary blade at nine o'clock at night, but you know, I guess you could. You lived close enough. Um, Superior Thread has wonderful thread. And this is, is one of the most economical threads they have. It's only a couple of dollars, but it's really good to have it around in all different colors. And, and I thought it would be handy to have. These are big eye needles for people who have a little bit more trouble seeing, maybe a couple cataracts. I don't know, getting old is not for sissies. And we'll talk about my eyebrows in a minute. Um, there's a little bit of candy in here. Nothing special, but these are really good. I Ask me how I know. I used to have five bags, now I have four. So anyway, here's a cute little teacup charm. The sad news about the charms is that Pen Peddlers is closing its doors. I think we're gonna be okay through August to be able to continue with the charms and the charm holders, but it might get a little tricky. So um, bear with me and I'll keep you posted on that. Here's some wildflowers on this card. I just thought that was such a pretty picture that I just did not want to shrink it or make it any different. I just like it. And if you 
if you like the saying, maybe you can use it for something. I don't know. Um, and then our our pattern, which is right here. And it, it walks you through everything, especially how to put them together. When you put the blocks together, you're just going to sew them right to each other. I laid mine out on the floor and moved them around till I got them the way I liked them. And then I sewed them in rows, and then I sewed the rows together. And then I'll show you this fabric. You're going to go outside and grab another one. And grab another one. Okay. All right. Not everybody's going to have all the same fabric because there were several different bolts that we weren't, eh, there wasn't quite enough of for everybody to have the same. So you may see it and say, I didn't get that one. I got something else. But there was a mistake at the factory and someone deleted our order. And then when they put it back in, there wasn't enough of certain ones. So we did the best we could, but they're all in the same line. So that's good. So there's this cute, I don't know, kind of a red floral you're okay and then there's this dark gray and what's really pretty about it is it's got a little turquoise center in it I don't know if it'll focus or not this is my favorite snapdragons and that's what I put on the back of this quilt turned out kind of pretty there's this turquoise or teal or uh, aqua. I'm not sure. This one I really loved. Come here, baby. And then this, some encouraging words. We all need encouraging words. Another greenish colored one with little X's. It's actually, yeah, it is an X with little dots in the corners. This one has a little bit of yellow kind of a sunflower looking pattern and then chickens we get at least a dozen eggs a day from our chickens they're doing really good right now and they're really enjoying this warmer weather although sometimes you wonder if it's ever going to be spring or if, well if you've ever been in Utah you can wear a parka and shorts and flip-flops and snow boots all on the same day you just never know for sure so that's our box for this month I want to also thank everyone for the sweet comments and encouragement that you give me. I appreciate it so much that you would take the time out of your day to say something nice to me. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started with this video. And I hope you enjoy Wildflower Farm. Thanks. Hi, everyone. This is our next quilt that I haven't named yet, but I will have by the time this video is done. I want to try and kill two birds with one stone and make it as we, um, as I do the tutorial on it so that it will all be done and I won't have to wait another week to get it done because boxes come out next week. So available is this panel and it has rows of really cute flowers and, um, farm things and love and poppies and all kinds of things on it so you're gonna need a panel with three well they're not really a panel but a strip that has three rows in it um, and then you're gonna want to cut each one out individually you don't want to double it over because the print may not be straight and you may end up cutting one of your blocks in half or cutting it off and you don't want to do that so cut as close as you can maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch and then um, just turn them and cut them again until you end up with a whole bunch of these and then I'll show you what to do next so you're gonna take your two and a half inch strip and then take your little square and flip it over and let's do the top which is narrower and put it right on here. We're going to strip piece this. Pay special attention. Look and see where the top of the print is. And that's where you need to sew. Don't sew a quarter of an inch like we normally do. Just sew right straight through that one. And then pick up your next one. And on the back, this is the back. So you're going to sew right where the pink ends and the white begins on this one. Thank you. 
And don't worry about it um, not being square. We're gonna square it up when we get finished. So go ahead and just sew that one and then just keep going. Now this one's a little tricky because it's got a lot of pink in it at the top, but if you're real careful, you can see where the dark pink ends and the light pink begins. So your seam allowance may be an eighth of an inch, but that's okay. What we want to do is get rid of that pink, and some of some of these panels are actually a really dark gray, and you probably don't want that to show for this quilt. So just go ahead and keep strip piecing until you get all of your panel, all of your little squares done. You should have 42 squares, and um, you'll just cut as many two-inch strips as the pattern calls for and then strip piece. And when you get through doing this, then I'll show you what comes next. So I got 14 blocks sewn on this first strip. Now I'm just gonna open up this little panel and get another strip and do the very same thing. I don't, I'm not cutting it, I just wanna save a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna sew right through those and then pick out the other, the next panel and keep going. And then when we get all through with this strip, we'll have the top and the bottom of this piece done. And we'll be able to just take a scissor or a rotary cutter and just cut right straight through. And it'll be even on both sides. So I'm going to hurry and do the rest of this. And then we'll go from there. So I'm just going to sew these like this. Now if you take up a little bit extra, it's not a big deal. We are, gonna, we are going to square this piece up. After we get all four sides on, we're going to square it up to six and a half inches. So we'll just keep going. When you're finished with this strip, do another strip until you get all of your little center pieces sewn on. Now when your, your row is all finished, you're gonna have, um, I say gonna a lot, don't I? You're going to have your top and your bottom attached to your center piece. Fold each one in, overlap one, and then they'll be out of your way and it'll be straight. And then flip it over so that the center piece is on top. Take your rotary cutter and your ruler and place it right in between the two and just cut them apart like that. If there's a little excess, you can cut it away, but you don't have to because it's so minimal, it won't really matter. And then just keep cutting them apart. And then take, take your center pieces over to the ironing board and press so that your seams are going away from the center and then i'll show you what comes next okay i've taken my pieces over to the ironing board and pressed them with the seam allowance turned out facing the the white or the off white and i wanted to explain that with this quilt block the center of the block we're going to use the edges of the print to sew by instead of the quarter inch seam allowance. So now we're gonna sew the sides on and we're gonna do it the same way that we did the top and the bottom. We're gonna chain piece them. So um, just go ahead and line them up just like you did before and then use your print as your guide. You don't wanna have any of the pink showing there you want to go ahead and sew right next to the green line in this block and then you'll just put the next one right up against it and keep going and you'll do that until all of your blocks have two sides on it just the way that we did it before with the top and the bottom okay now we have a really nice stack of 42 blocks that are approximately seven by eight and we're going to take each one and cut it down to six and a half. So get your six and a half inch ruler and center it as best you can with this center block. Then you're going to cut off 
all the way around it and just square it to six and a half inch block. Remember, don't reach over. And try to get a rotating mat if you can, because they're really worth it. A lot of band-aids were spared in the making of this quilt. Okay, so we make a nice stack of those. Center these two lines here at two and four and a half almost go perfectly around this center block. And then you've got about an inch, inch and a half above and an inch and a half below. So you're cutting off a half to a quarter of an inch on the sides and about three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom. So get all your squares ready and then set them aside and then we'll go to the next step. Hi everyone. I have pressed with um, some best press all of these fat quarters and lined them up with the right edge together and now I'm just going to clean up that edge so that it's nice and straight. I'm just really right handed and some of you may be left-handed, and so you would probably want to line up your left side instead of your right side. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is cut two-inch strips. And just go ahead and cut them until you run out of fat quarter, or, yeah, fat quarters. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you the next cut you need to make. Okay, the next cut you make, you're going to have a long strip like this that will be, I don't know, 20, 18, okay, they're like this actually. So they're 18 inches or so long. So cut those into eight inch strips. So eight inch by two, and you'll get two out of each strip. And then just stack them up. Now we're going to do the block and I show you while I'm sewing it, but I'd like to show you where I have a flat surface. So since I'm right handed, I'm going to start here in this corner and just estimate right here where a quarter inch is, a quarter inch in this way and a quarter inch in this way. And that is where I'm going to start sewing. So. I want to match this, the end right here with the bottom of the six and a half inch block and move all the way up to here and then use my little friction pin or whatever and make a dot so I can see it. I'm going to sew from here all the way down and I'll show you with the sewing machine what I'm going to do. Once this is sewn all the way down, you'll fold it back and finger press it. And then the next strip will fit perfectly right down here on the bottom and so on until you get back to here. And so I'll show you that from the sewing machine. I just wanted to double check with you and make sure that you realize these are eight by two. That makes a difference for it to fit right. Here's the block that we're making. We're going to take the center block, which is six and a half, and then we're going to sew on two inch by eight inch strips all the way around. So to, to do that, I'm gonna show you how to, to get started. It's a little bit tricky the way that this block is laid out and I don't know the name of it. Maybe somebody, one of you know. So let us know what it is if you do know. Okay, I take my six and a half inch block and then my first strip and I want to measure in a quarter of an inch, wait, a quarter of an inch from the edge here, from this edge and this edge. So, and then put a dot right there. And that's where we wanna start sewing. So, what I like to do is just line up the bottom, the strip to the bottom, and then maybe put just a little pin or something so that you know where to start and stop right at that quarter inch mark right there. 
okay and then that's just to mark it if if you want you can use your friction pin mark it on this side then you won't have to put a pin there and you can pin it if you want to i don't i just kind of eyeball it but there you go just start there and then sew all the way down this strip to the bottom and then just take your fingers and press that out so that it's going away from the center block and then take your next strip and it lines up perfectly with your side border here and then you'll just sew that on and that also lines up with your block matching the edges and then fold that back and finger press it this fabric cute it's called poppy cotton um, it's from prairie sisters and called poppy cotton I guess I, I had a hard time finding any other names on it but I sure like the colors of course it's got teal in it that's kind of my go-to color these days and then Press that finger press that back and then the last one and this is my favorite print of all of them line up the edge against the outer edge and I like to try and make sure that these seams are folded back when I start sewing you'll kind of know if they're not they'll kind of be in your way they flip, flip back and forth but that's up to you it's a personal preference thing and then as you get to this corner pull pull this side your right hand side border back and just sew all the way right off the edge and now it looks like this so you just turn your block flip it over and it matches up just right and then sew down the rest of your block till you get right to the where you started sewing and you're all done and there you go and there's your block and this is the back and it's pretty simple so we're at the end of our video and i just wanted to talk about how you put your blocks together um, it's really simple you just lay them out five across and seven rows down I'll just kind of show you the cutting table right here so that one's a different color but we'll just pretend it's right it's the wrong size too but we'll just lay these out five across and then just sew them right together and then the next row goes right underneath it and you'll just sew them together and you'll do that until the whole quilt's all the tops all done and then if you want to you can add borders or you can do whatever you want it's your quilt so make it your own i appreciate you hanging with me through the rest of this video the wind's blowing it's utah it's not salina unless the wind's blowing and it looks like it's gonna rain and yet another wardrobe change but Anyway, I appreciate your input and your thoughts and your suggestions that are nice, so I'll always keep them nice. And I'll be with you next month. I'm not going to make a pattern for the next month, but there's something coming out in the next box that I will make a quilt out of. So stand by. I will also be doing a tutorial soon on binding. So because some of you have asked for that so let me know what you think subscribe if you feel like it and have a really awesome week thanks we'll see you next time